Um, yeah, I just um, start right quick. My name is Christian Mullius. I'm one of the founders and managing partners of InnoValue. Like Marco said, we are not an intro tech, we are not a digital startup. We are an old school consultancy and we are founded in 2001 already, so 15 years in business. We have about 70 consultants and indeed our major clients, like you can see, are the big incumbents, but also um, large brokers, smaller brokers and also VCs and startups. And the reason why I'm standing here today is probably the last point on the slide. Um, about one and a half years ago, we started a database where we track about 800 inshore techs worldwide, which gives us a very good overview of uh, what's, this, what's going on in the business. Um, it's quite tough to do this in, in one minute, but still I try. So if you look at this slide, um, on the left-hand side, you see some of these examples of global insure techs. Actually, we see they're quite a hype. Um, and we see some unicorns uh, already. For instance, Song An is a pretty interesting example from my point of view. They made it to 300 million customers within the first two years of operations, so a pretty good job. Um, but we see many small startups like Everledger, which is using the blockchain technology, or bought by many, which is an interesting peer-to-peer -peer business. So a great variety and, and many things to look at. On the right-hand side, you see the German startups, the insured techs. We count around 50, maybe. And uh, also, as well, we have a kind of a variety there. But interesting is, uh, that most of the startups in Germany focus on the insurance wallet, and my guest is even uh, here. Uh, he's one of the one of the startups with also an insurance wallet in his hands. So we learn about this later. Um, the question we ask ourselves about the disruption potential um, is quite interesting because if we look at these insurance wallets. We have some questions on our minds. One is the technology. Is it really possible to disrupt the industry um, with a value chain that is not really automatized from end to end? Because if you look at the technology, it's, it's kind of tough because we have around 600 insurance companies and they have all the different and own technology and no standards. Uh, so it's kind of tough for the startups to, to disrupt by technology. If you look at the product, um, we have also some questions because it's nice to have some contracts you had in paper before now digital in a wallet, but is that really disrupting? Um, I don't know yet. So finally, my last slide, then I will introduce you, Julian, one second. Um, the number on the right hand side is very important. We ask 1,500 users um, not so long ago regarding the value added um, they experience while using these insurance wallets. And the bad part is, this is why it's red, um, it's that 71% said no there was no value added. And if we look at the customer acquisition costs of these companies, it's going to be a tough game in the end uh, when the users are not satisfied. But now we have a guest. Um, it's uh, Julian Teike from Finance Fox, and he will tell us uh, how they will do it differently. So please welcome Julian. Thank you. <laughs> so Julian, um, let, uh, I think it's a good way to start this discussion if you introduce yourself, introduce Finance Fox with three, four sentences. You know, we're running out of time quick here. And maybe give us some insights about your facts and figures. Yeah, uh, so uh, 800 insure tech startups around the world, and he has chosen us. Um, so thank you for that. And I think there's a good reason for that. We've been around the block for eight months now. We've been growing to the biggest digital broker within Europe. We're growing approximately three to 400. Uh, customers per day. Um, uh, we're now at 40,000 customers uh, altogether. And uh, if we look at uh, the most important KPI for us currently is how do we acquire customers at low rates? And we have found a way to keep the customer acquisition costs at below 20. Sounds interesting. Um, but tell us, what, what makes you different from all the other logos I have shown from Clark, Nip, Get Safe? There are so many. Well, what's your special about Finance Fox? All right, two things. Uh, what do you have to do to really have an impact in insurance? And uh, the digital wallet, as you call it, is a bit superficial. Uh, what it is for me is just the best entry market strategy, uh, market entry strategy, to really have an impact on the insurance product. Uh, so what we essentially do is we solve the two biggest problems uh, that uh, companies in insurance have. How do I get an overview of the mm. entire customer, meaning the legacy portfolio? And this is what aggregators have done over the last 20 years. They've essentially disseminated the relationship between the primary insurance companies and the consumers. Global average six insurance policies at four different carriers. So for that, <coughs> it's a great model. Number two is how do I acquire customers at cheap rates? 
Currently, uh, customer acquisition costs are anywhere between two, three, four, five hundred. Um, and this is exactly what we're doing differently. We're working together with the old economy, and we have found a way on how to utilize a dynamic that is happening on a global scale, which means the traditional broker that is under a lot of pressure, that has acquired a lot of substance customers over the last couple of years, now looking for a way on how to make his business sustainable. 80% of our customers are coming from traditional brokers that are transferring their customers to Finance Fox, serve their customers with our technology under the brand of Finance Two Fox. Two things there. Um, interesting story, I can follow that, but still some questions in my mind. First, do the brokers trust you? Because in the long run, shouldn't they fear to lose the customer in the end? And second, do you think that the other players in the market, the broker pools, sit on trees and throw bananas? Or do you think they might even uh, also attack you and your business model by throwing also apps in the broker market? Because they have the broker relations, what you don't have right now. Uh, so we have the broker relations. Um, so we're working together with the pools, not against them. And we have exclusive access to 4,000 uh, brokers in, uh, in Germany. And no, they don't fear us. They love us. Why? Because we have a very strong value proposition. We protect their customer base. They're not losing their customers to any of the digital entrants that you've shown on the right side uh, that are spending two, three hundred euros for them. They make their customers stay in their portfolio. We reduce their administrative work. We're a support team with a back office that has automated the processes to the carriers. Uh, we are uh, delivering uh, SaaS technology to them to manage their portfolio in a much better way, see upselling potential, and generate more revenue. And essentially, we also give them new customers in their direct proximity, so they completely love us. So in the near future, what are you going to be then? A new broker pool, or will you become a fully integrated insurer? What, what are the next steps then? Um, so, I mean, the challenge of our business right now is that we're handling uh, the relations to uh, several hundreds of insurance companies. And yes, we do even have APIs to these insurance companies. In Germany, more than 900. But it's not based on APIs. It's based on the process efficiency on the side of the insurance company. Right now in our business model, we are not in full charge of the customer experience. So we need to find a way on how to evolve the business model to the next stage, which means owning the product and creating our own product range and creating a truly seamless customer experience with claims handled within 15 minutes, managing all of the payments in your account, getting instant feedback on claims with a, a cashback alternative uh, within minutes, um, automating 95% of all claims below 1,000 euros. So that's where we need to go, uh, and that's the natural evolution of our business model. The primary insurance companies want to work with us, but they will not be fast enough uh, to, uh, to deliver on what the customer demands. So it's gonna stay exciting. Okay, our time has run up, I see. I think next year, or maybe even in London, Marco, um, it's a time to speak a little bit more about InsurTechs because it's a hot topic, and we will wait and see what's happening. It's a, it's a very interesting race, and like yesterday, Oliver Zamba said, it's a marathon, and I think we have the beginning. So thank you for listening to us. Thank you, Julian. I think um, that was a good discussion, and yeah, thank you, Marco, for, this, uh, for the chance to be here. Thanks. Well, I have to say thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>